Hey guys, it's A Lot of Life with Joel. And today I wanted to talk about clinical trials and studies. Uh, I recently joined the planning committee for a local type 1 diabetes uh, retreat and I was asked to be on the panel for the clinical trials um, session. And I realized that, hey, that might make a good topic for video. I know I've already talked a little bit about uh, the one that I've been in before in my TCLM X2 unboxing video, and I think probably another one or two. Um, but I think today I wanted to go a little bit more in depth, kind of go over the whole sort of process that I went through. Um, also, if anybody is attending the adult retreat that I mentioned, uh, it's in the Seattle area. It's April 22nd and 23rd. Our registration has been extended until March 26th. So there's still a little bit of time to sign up. Um, I'll put a link in the description down there. Um, so in this video, I'm mainly going to talk about my experience having been in a clinical study and sort of what inspired me. And I'll put some resource links in the description um, in case anybody else is interested to try to find any studies or, or trials in your area. Um, so I think I'll start with the basics. Uh, in case you don't know, a clinical trial is a way to carefully test a new drug or device uh, in patients before FDA approves them for the general public. Uh, however, in my case, I was in a clinical study, which um, is where the researchers were studying the drug um, Stiltuximab, um, which is already currently FDA approved. So they're, they're studying a drug that's already been approved, but for a different uh, purpose. It's been approved for, um, I believe, multi, what is it? Sorry, I'm reading off my notes. Um, multicentric Castleman's disease. It's a rare disorder, apparently, that's like lymphoma, which is a cancer of the lymph nodes. So, yeah, they wanted to test out if this drug um, can help preserve some beta cell destruction. So I guess it binds with some kind of receptor or blocks something. And the hope is that because diet type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease, um, it's sort of an autoimmune suppressant drug. And therefore, they're trying to block the part of the immune system that attacks the beta cells or at least sort of limit um, the destruction. And so that's kind of what they were testing is to see if they could slow down or limit the destruction of the beta cells in the pancreas. The beta cells being the cells in the pancreas that produce the hormone insulin, which is what uh, we need to get energy, get the sugar from our blood into our cells so we can have energy. Um, let me start about how I got involved. Um, I went to JDRF's Type 1 Nation Summit uh, where um, I attended a session on clinical trials and there was a three-person panel. Uh, one woman was um, in the Medtronic uh, hybrid closed loop system trial, which was really interesting uh, and really involved uh, because it was, I guess, very intense. She had to go to like spend two weeks in a hotel room with a roommate and it was monitored 24 seven. And then it's like actually a year and a half long study and then just constant monitoring. Um, so that, so that, that was interesting, uh, but really involved. There was another woman who was testing a drug. Uh, I think it was, it's a type two diabetes drug called, I think Jardians that they're testing for use in type one diabetics to kind of supplement insulin maybe um, maybe it like levels out your requirements or it makes your resistance, your insulin resistance go down, something like that. Um, and that was a double blinded study uh, in that case where the participant and, and her endo, I guess, or endocrinologist that recommended her for the study. Um, and maybe even the people administering the drug or giving her the drugs didn't know which she was receiving, the placebo or the drug. Um, but apparently, like after the first dose, her blood sugar just dropped. So it was pretty clear that it wasn't the placebo. Um, but anyway, and then the third, the third group was actually was a, a, a father and a son. And they were there because the, the daughter um, had been diagnosed with type 1. And so they had the whole family tested. And apparently the father um, 
tested positive for one of the antibodies that indicates uh, that can indicate type 1 diabetes and the son tested positive for two different antibodies that indicate type 1 diabetes and I think the, currently the understanding that we have of type 1 diabetes is that there's at least four different antibodies that they've identified that potentially indicates type 1 diabetes and if you have if you test positive for two or more of those then you will 100 percent going to develop type 1 diabetes um, but it's it's progression so there are different there's like there's like four or five different stages that they've identified right now of type 1 diabetes and the son was in the stage where he has the antibodies but he, his body has yet to turn on his, his immune system has yet to turn on his um, beta cells. So as far as I know, he hadn't lost any beta cell function. So they were testing a drug out to kind of to catch people before it develops into type 1 to help lengthen that period uh, before you actually develop type 1 diabetes. So, so him and I think his dad was getting blood draws. They were doing a study of like the whole family basically. So anyway, that was interesting. And so that kind of, you know, these, and, and they had to like, and they had to fly, they had to come like hundreds of miles to every, I guess every week, every two weeks, and just throughout the whole study. And it just, you know, all the lengths they went to, I'm like, well, then I, you know, I can get involved. I can do that. I can, you know, you know, I could at least do my, a little bit of part. So that kind of inspired me to, to, to want to do it as well. And they had a um, little vendor booth set up out um, in the hallway, and I just happened to fill out the form for one of the research institutes there. And about a week after the event, I got a call, and they said, uh, "Hey, we think you qualify, or you're perfect for one of our studies. Do you wanna do you wanna come in and do it?" And um, and so they and they sent me all the information about the study, you know, what the drug was, and sort of the schedule. Um, of the appointments and what would be involved. So I kind of had that all up front. And so it seemed pretty minimal. Excuse me, I, I would only have to go in for about uh, six or so appointments over the course of two or three months. So it, it wasn't a huge time commitment. So I thought, sure, why not? Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and so thankfully, though, I did have about 400 hours of sick leave bank. So getting time off, I, I didn't, you know, wasn't a big deal. Um, but one thing I will mention that people maybe want to know about is um, my employer, when I told them about this, they wouldn't wanted me to fill out um, FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act paperwork, just in case um, something happened during the study and I was unable to work or I got injured or ill and I was unable to work, that um, my job was still safe, like I would still have a job when I recovered or whatever. So, um, And so I took the paperwork to the doctors running the study, and it's commonplace. They fill out all, all the time. So it's not a big deal. But, uh, you know, if you, if you want, you can do the FMLA route, and that way, just in case, you know, something bad happens, you've got, you've got yourself covered. Um, so anyway, I'll mention, you know, I think I mentioned in that unboxing video, my X2 unboxing video, that I ended up doing, I think, a total of seven appointments. Um, the first one, uh, the first two were kind of screening test ones to make sure that I was eligible. Um, so the first one was a mixed meal tolerance test where I had a fasting, I had a fast, and then I drank, like, I think I've mentioned it in my other videos, but I had to drink this shake, and it's called a mixed meal uh, because... The shake contains fat and protein and carbs, and then they kind of watch how your blood sugar spikes, and then they draw your blood periodically over the course of several hours, and I think they can kind of tell, okay, well, how much is your body responding? How much insulin are you producing to help counteract all this extra um, stuff that's going in? So... So I had to do that one, and then after that I had a follow-up. It was kind of another screening slash physical, uh, so I had two screening appointments. And then once I finished those, um, I actually then went and had the infusion. And so for this drug, uh, basically they infuse it over the course of about an hour, so it's just the, an IV. Uh, and that's the one thing for pretty much all of these. 
um, that if you don't mind getting your blood drawn or it's not a big deal, uh, then they're for you. But if you have a fear of getting your blood drawn, I mean, if you're type 1 diabetic, you're probably going to get them every three months anyway to get your A1C. I know, I know there's some finger poke tests that, that they do, but uh, but anyway, if you have a problem getting blood drawn, then, you know, clinical tests, clinical trials, studies, whatever, probably aren't for you. Uh, because, so I had um, a ton of blood drawn for the MMTT, and then I think I had some more blood drawn for the screening. And then, um, and then I had the infusion, which I had, um, obviously, I had an IV. And then I think they may have done a blood draw. So they, do a blood, they might have done draw some blood at the time as well. And then the next four appointments um, are all just blood draws to kind of monitor, you know, how your, I guess, your what your C-peptide level is or to kind of monitor, you know, to see where your beta cell destruction is and see, you know, how this, I guess, how this drug is reacting or, or to your immune system and, and the receptors. So um, anyway, that's kind of, I just, I went down and I had, you know, and the longer appointments, especially the morning ones, um, the mixed meal tolerance test, I got breakfast as well. So that was kind of cool. They have a, in the hospital, they have a menu there. Um, so this, so the Benoit Royal Research Institute, which I went through is actually, um, based out of a hospital. So it's just sort of your regular kind of hospital sort of beds and everything. And, um, and so they have a nice menu in there that actually has the carb counts um, for the items. So that's really handy um, for diabetics trying to figure out, you know, uh, how to bolus for the meal. So that was really nice. Um, but anyway, so then I had the blood draws. And uh, so I think, you know, ultimately my takeaways um, from this experience, I would say are, one, it's you get sort of a second care team, right? Because you have all these doctors that are invested in, sort of what's going on with you and they're monitoring you and they want to know how uh, how you're doing and and, and uh, so you can use that resource don't be afraid to ask questions um, ask your doctors you know you can talk about just maybe other things that are going on physically too even if it's maybe not related um, they seem pretty open to just kind of kind of helping you out um, and don't hesitate like in my case I knew what drug I was getting I knew ahead of time it was already approved by the FDA so I could go look it up so I kind of did my own little research just to see, you know, what I was getting myself into. So that that would be something I recommend if you're in that kind of um, you're in that situation. Um, and, uh, you know, also, uh, I guess I didn't mention, but there is a, sort of a stipend. Uh, so I got paid um, for each one of the appointments, a certain amount that was that was agreed upon. They they sort of had a, a list of how much they could pay up front. So I knew how much I would be getting. And I also negotiated travel because I had to travel like 30, 40 miles and deal with traffic. And so I was able to get them to give me a reimbursement, So, which was great. So I got some extra cash. The issue came when I just did my taxes. And I was like, OK, well, do I need to claim this as income? Um, and so I went ahead and did that. And I included all the travel and everything included as income. But then today I found out that um, they actually aren't re required to report to the IRS anything below $600. So if the stipend total is below $600, they don't even have to report it. So therefore the, you know, the government, I guess the IRS wouldn't know that you got money. Now, I don't know whether you need to report it anyway. Uh, the one thing they did say is that because, and they also would not report the travel because it's a reimbursement, it's not part of the stipend. So that's not part of the $600 limit. So anyway, that's just, something people probably don't think about, but uh, you might want to think about is just, um, you know, when it comes to tax time, you might need to think about how you're going to fill that out, especially if you're over the $600 threshold, then you definitely probably need to claim it. Um, and so I hope that this video um, gave people some info on sort of what my experience on the clinical trial was maybe it would inspire you to do it as well, kind of give back, help out, um, maybe earn a little cash, which isn't too bad. Um, like I said, I think over the six or seven sessions with the travel and everything, I probably got around 600 bucks, which, you know, at least it's something. Um, not, I mean, I would have done it for free just because I, you know, I want to help the community, but uh, it's nice to, to kind of help compensate my time and everything. Um, anyway, so if you have any questions, any more questions about uh, clinical trial, clinical study that I was in, um, let me know. 
And also, um, if you want to, I would love it if you could recommend uh, any topics you want me to cover. Uh, I've done about you know, a dozen videos by now, and I'm kind of, you know, not sure what I want to do next. So uh, any outside help would be great. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye.